I'm William Seckler, President and CEO of the Community House in Birmingham, and welcome to Making a Difference at the Community House. Within each show, as you know, we recognize individuals, corporations, sponsors, donors, and cultural mavericks that are in our community making a difference. Today we have a very exciting show and a very special guest to be here, Dan Carmody. Dan is the head of the Eastern Market Corporation, one of the longest serving nonprofit organizations, and I think a real cultural maverick in our community and in the state of Michigan. Welcome to the show, Dan. Thanks, it's a pleasure to be here. It, it is terrific to talk to you. I know of your great work every day we hear about the Eastern Market Corporation. Well, if you don't, we're not doing our job. So. <laughs> That's exactly. Well, we are pleased. Uh, you know, you really have done an extraordinary job since you've been at the helm. I know you've got an extraordinary team and, and a great base, but uh, what you have done in our region, and especially before Detroit uh, has made its big comeback, you've been down there doing great work, and you continue to do it. Today's show, we're going to have a couple of our cultural mavericks that are also a part of our Culture Talk series. And you've just had that uh, um, speaking engagement with us, uh, and so we're very thankful for you uh, it, being it was, there. It was a great night, I really enjoyed it. Th thank you so much, and before you, we had Alicia Bowery reader from MOCAD that spoke, so we're halfway through our series, folks, but we've got two more to go, we'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, Dan, f tell me, first of all, uh, Eastern Market Corporation, um, folks may not know it's a 501c3 organization, it is. It's one of the longest running public markets in the nation. Um, generations of Detroiters, my own parents and grandparents, have been visiting the market for 125 years and going. And uh, it is really a beloved staple in the community. So many events now occur there, but you do so much outreach and other things. Can you tell me in a nutshell, because you are a complex organization, what's the mission of the Easter Market? Uh, we, we boiled a, a really complex set of uh, programs and operations down to one sentence. And we're trying to leverage the historic legacy that is Eastern Market to make the trade healthier, wealthier, and happier. And mm. those, fall, those three buckets really fill out the, the full mission of what we try to do. From a healthier side, um, we simply have to eat better if we're going to solve our national health care crisis. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, does, it didn't cause it, but it's a major contributing uh, factor. And uh, we're dedicated a whole bunch of programs to increasing food access and consumption of healthier food, which is a little bit swimming upstream. Uh, but we, we think we got to get food into places where it doesn't naturally go from the market. We got to give people financial incentive, particularly poor people, to eat better. That's right. Uh, you know, the incidence of type 2 diabetes is income related. If you're poor, you're much more likely to be type 2 diabetic than if you're wealthy. And so a lot wow. of that is diet related. And then uh, lastly, we got generations of people, myself included, whose grandparents would be ashamed <laughs> at, at their kitchen skills. So using the market as a platform, I just captured some wonderful images of a cooking class in, in Shed 5 on Saturday. There were 20 very enthusiastic uh, participants, uh, all walks of life, kind of, but it was a great scene, so I had to get some images of that. Um, the, the wealthier part is trying to use the food system to create more jobs and to, to build more businesses, both to create uh, employment and uh, uh, wealth creating small businesses. And so we, we have a whole number of programs related to trying to foster food entrepreneurship, which is hot around the country. Uh, Absolutely. We, we can probably go into that maybe later. but. The, the third piece, the happier piece, uh, I, I'm actually becoming of a belief that that may be the most important thing we do in that the divisions that seem to be tearing this part, country apart, the market is a place where people come together. And whether it's the Saturday market, which is one of the most joyful expressions of urban living I've experienced in my 40-year city-making career as a planner and as an economic development official, but even the many events that uh, now, you know, as, as we fix up the market, its use, for other people's events when there's not a market activity is off the charts. We had a couple of fundraisers for Rising Stars Academy, weddings. Uh, this summer we have a whole host of events from uh, Detroit Book Festival to the, the third annual Jewish Food Festival in Detroit. So those kinds of things, again, bring people together. They celebrate around food and they enjoy each other and maybe, just maybe, that's kind of important these days. Oh, I, I tell you, you know, amen. 
uh, to everything that you have said, uh, Dan, and I will tell you, um, you have managed to somehow make each one of those salient points a reality. And I will tell you, from the days when I came down there with my, with my mom and dad and pulled a wagon for Flower Day and uh, went and visited some of the markets, I think Hertz was there, I, don't, I haven't, haven't been there in a while, but these were great memories. But what you have really done is you have kept up with today and uh, modern problems, issues, and are addressing them in a great way. Sustainability, that farm to table, healthy eating, the fact of the matter is not only that, but you're working with the schools, you're working with children, and right. uh, doing so much, as you said, it really is making a big difference. So with, with this show calling Making a Difference, uh, uh, you, you guys are just, uh, you're benchmarking and leaders in it, and I congratulate you for that. You have a, quite a big crowd that comes each year. Uh, how many people come through the market? We get uh, annually upwards of two million visitors. Uh, wow. And you know, um, in, in the last few years, People generally know us for the Saturday market, which is year-round. And uh, as I said, on, on, we like you know some of the taglines we've thought about over the years is Detroit weekend started Easter market. Uh, you know there there are people that are, are just there every week, and it is truly uh, one of the most chaotic, uh, mayhemic uh, experience. It's not for everybody. You know you got to be you know parking is uh, an acquired taste <laughs> uh, or part of the charm we like to say <laughs> that's right you cannot accommodate 30 or 40,000 people and have something you want to go to and have good parking yeah and so we need to improve it a little bit but it'll never be good yeah uh, and so but in addition Saturday market what many people may not know is Easter market started out as a wholesale market so this time of year we are a farmers market Monday through Friday midnight to 5 a.m. where larger growers connect with grocers oh is that right independent grocers now that that's a fraction of the business that used to be. That used to be why we were there. Mm -hmm. But the wholesale markets in the United States have changed. Grocery stores now control most of the wholesale trade function mm. through their regional uh, warehouses. And so what we do and what the folks do at the southwest side of Detroit at the Detroit um, Produce Terminal is a fraction. We used to be the we used to be the monopolist, but now we're just niche players. Yeah. Uh, but in the last few years, we've also added a Tuesday market for those people who find Saturday just a bit too crazy. Oh, great. And so it's a scale model, it's smaller, but we also have a, we kind of like to think of it as a weekly health and wellness festival. So one shed filled with stuff, sort of a mini Saturday mar market, and one shed filled with things like Zumba or yoga classes or health and nutrition, cooking information dis distribution. Wow. And so that runs June through September, and then we have a cameo appearance the Tuesday before Thanksgiving and the Tuesday before Christmas if it falls on the right day of the week. And then the Sunday market debuted about four years ago, and it's not about food at all. It's about people that make stuff, whether it's jewelry or hand, uh, artsy items. And, uh, you know, and we also try to have a unique uh, an event as part of that as many weeks as possible. So next few weeks, I think next week, uh, we have something called the Burger Battle, which is like uh, area restaurants compete for the best burger. Oh, it's like fantastic. Fourth year of that. As I mentioned earlier, we'll have the Jewish Food Festival in August, the, book, the Detroit Book Show in uh, July, I believe, and just a number of events tied into that Sunday market. So lots of reasons to go to Eastern Market. Uh, it's not just, uh, for, just not Saturdays anymore. Yes. And uh, throughout the week, you know, we have an increasing number of brick and mortar merchants that are open six and seven days a week, so. Well, I'll tell you the development just in and around the market. Right. And it's not only. Something we, we uh, are, you know, we like to think Eastern Market uh, survived the last 50 years in large part because of the failure of Detroit real estate. Ah. Because as you go around the country, and increasingly our peers are not in the United States anymore, our peers are around the rest of the world, because so many of the large markets and market districts in the United States have been um, overrun by bars, boutiques, and lofts. Right. And as Detroit's resurgence, now we now see bars and boutiques and lofts coming at us. That's right. There's this tsunami of investment that's not a bad thing. Right. But how do we manage it so that 10 years from now, Eastern Market is both a place that still has food making as a principal activity, and most importantly, how do we make it as a place everybody still feels welcome? We believe that if we did nothing in 10 years, both of those things would be at high risk. Right. And so we've been spending the last three years trying to figure out answers to those two questions and convince the city that this was an important job center for the city. And they are now uh, leading an effort, uh, $800,000 uh, implementation plan to, to look at the strategy we developed to, to answer those two questions 
about how to expand the market so we can keep 1,500 food making jobs. And what, what do we need to do to make sure that 10 years from now, not only do we have high end restaurants, really cool stuff for people from all over the region to come to, but we also have a barber and a, and a, and a shoe repair guy and maybe a dollar store for the, the moderate income residents that live around the market. Oh, fantastic. We, if we don't pay attention to that, that's something that other cities have seen. Uh, the affluent customer displace what we would consider a range from affluent to not so affluent. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, it is amazing uh, how forward thinking Easter Market is and just what you've laid out, uh, uh, Dan, I'll tell you. That's the benefit uh, in Detroit of going last. I mean, <laughs> we watched as, as, as this phenomenon, you know, I grew up in Chicago and the Fulton Market area used to look a lot like Easter Market. Okay, but, no kidding. But now it looks a lot like Birmingham, downtown Birmingham. Yeah, for sure. And there's nothing wrong with that. No, no. It, it's, it's just it, our soul is serving everybody yeah. and being about food. Yeah, that's right. Well, you know, and you mentioned the parking about it. You know, here we are in Birmingham and, and we got a lot of parking structures. We hear about the challenges with parking. But, uh, you know, we, we consider ourselves a small urban area, but you're a larger urban area and that's part of the experience, isn't it? Yeah. So I, I wouldn't, for folks that may be listening to Today, I wouldn't let parking put uh, parking put uh, any damper on it. I just think what you have done and the importance that you have placed on all of these different um, uh, um, segues and and uh, and uh, disciplines in the area, whether it is the health and wellness, whether it is the social side of it, it's the sustainability in the food. Right. It's incredible, well, and it, we are so lucky to have this jewel yeah, in our neighborhood. Other cities who've lost their places like Easter Market desperately would want them back because. The food sector is one of the hottest entrepreneurial um, uh, areas there is in the country and the economy. Uh, people are, beer is a great metaphor for what's happening in food. You know, 1985, there were 103 breweries left in the United States. Today, we've, we've exceeded 6,000. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. And craft beer is now 20% market share. Phenomenal. So people have sought out a better quality product than what they drink, and increasingly they're doing it with what they eat. And so. In Detroit, uh, with many partners, uh, Food Lab Detroit, Build Institute, um, the Tech Town, we, we have identified, we believe, a pool of 350 food entrepreneurs. Wow. And our, our goal is to incubate and accelerate them to maximize whatever dream they have. So most of those folks want to have a storefront and maybe employ a few people. We've seen one, McClure's Pickles, go from two brothers to 40 employees selling their pickles in a few grocery stores to selling their pickles literally worldwide. So our goal with our acceleration programs is to figure out if we did nothing out of 350, there might be two McClure's. Yeah. If we do something intensely, there might be 10 McClure's. Well, eight times 40 is 320. That's a number of jobs that Detroit needs. And so. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, Dan, we, we could uh, talk a whole hour with you. We're running out of time. A couple of things I'd like our viewers to know is, number one, they can find parking. Number two, how do they get a hold of you and what would they right. look for? The best thing, you know, there's so much going on, the best thing to do is look at our website on, or Facebook page. Okay. So www.easternmarket.org, we'll okay. get you there, www.easternmarket.org. Okay. And again, all sorts of great events coming up all summer long, all fall long, all year long. So I, I, one of the things we try to overcome is this notion that somehow we're Saturday, that the market doesn't happen on a year-long basis. It does, and we encourage people to take full advantage of uh, really, what is uh, a, a jewel in the Detroit metro area? Well, you've been a dear friend of the Community House, uh, Dan, and the Senior Men's Club of Birmingham, and so many others. You talk, you speak, you promote, you really are one of the best ambassadors. I congratulate you for the great work going on. Folks, if you haven't been down to the Eastern Market, uh, you better get down there quick. The buildings are gorgeous, the facilities are beautiful, and it is, it sounds like a seven day a week operation. Go on their website. Website again? WW Eastern market.org and remember to bring your smile. Bring your smile. Thank you so much for being on the show. I really Pleasure. appreciate it. Folks, we're going to take a break when we come back. Another cultural maverick in the state of Michigan. Thank you again for being on the show, Dan. My pleasure. Alrighty.